So it is my great pleasure to introduce both a colleague and a friend, Kuhn Sevenhan, who is a doctor of adolescent and child psychology, and also the MHPSS lead of the Global Child Protection Area of Responsibility, also the CPAOR. And we're very happy to have Kuhn with us here today. And please use the chat function to send your questions for their presenters. And we'll also present these to the speakers during this next Q&A session. So very happy to have everyone with us today. And I will now hand it over to Kuhn to get us started. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Ashley, for this beautiful introduction. And congratulations for my part as high as MHPSS.net and the collaborator have been working on the so uh, essential part uh, of this humanitarian work on MHPSS. Um, what will we do today? Well, we have 90 minutes, just like a football game in the World Cup. And we will start with a uh, brief discussion of 15 minutes with uh, two uh, VIPs who will soon introduce themselves. And then uh, we will go into breakout rooms because, as you have seen in this title, this is truly an exchange, much more than a webinar. It is an exchange, and we want to bring you all together. I get more in details later. We will work for 30 minutes in uh, in groups, and then we come back together and uh, we discuss the outcomes of this. But first, uh, let me have the honor to uh, welcome two of our uh, VIPs, which is Olha and Stanislava. Olha, can I ask you to introduce yourself briefly? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Kun. My name is uh, Olha. Uh, I am uh, from Ukraine, from Kharkiv. Now I am located in Ushkorod. Uh, and I am working as a practitioner and as a manager of large team of psychologists. Now we have 50 psychologists in our uh, organization, Kroliska. Uh, and uh, maybe, uh, maybe that's all <laughs> for now. No, it's a, it's a very challenging uh, working environment for sure. Stanislava, I'm so happy that you could join us today uh, as well. Can you also introduce yourself briefly? Добрый день. Я Станислава Валевская. Меня слышно? Я сейчас нахожусь в Сама я дончанка. Работаю, работаю в дитячей местечке Косос. Психолог, психотерапевт. Дякую. Thank you so much. And I can promise you people we have even anticipated that there might not be electricity. So in case this interview uh, would go wrong, we even have a pre-made recording of it. But we are so happy that we can do it uh, live because that does not only mean that uh, we have uh, internet signal, but also a little bit of heating. So that's uh, great news. Uh, Olga, uh, could you provide us with a brief overview of the recent developments now in, in Ukraine? Uh, for MHPSS service delivery and talk a little bit about the differences in, 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 in regions and locations? Uh, uh, I can say that now uh, maybe everyone in Ukraine realizes that MHPSS is needed. Because in the beginning, people believe, you know, in 2014, people believed that, first of all, we should think only about basic needs and not about PSS. Uh, and uh, and really, it's challenging. And I can say that people are uh, people people's needs and people's requests are very different, not only from region to region. Because surely, if you are on the occupied territory or if you are uh, under constant shelling, you have no electricity. You need uh, you depend on like food supply from humanitarian organizations one thing and if you are in safer territory uh, where also you hear 
alarm uh, that uh, there is missile attack, but uh, you maybe you never seen uh, damaged uh, buildings uh, or uh, you never see like uh, uh, or wounded people, for example. Or uh, uh, it's different situation, but everyone now suffers from uh, uh, electricity switch off. So, so uh, and so it really uh, influences on all population, including children, who additionally have uh, are disrupted from from education because of because of in school uh, very often it's cold and uh, if we speak about uh, distance education it's difficult to have it without electricity uh, thank you olga it must be indeed so difficult uh, also for many of the participants that are here in this uh, exchange uh, uh, webinar um stanislava there are so many people who uh, need assistance right um and this of course has a big influence on, on, on the quality of service and how many time you can spend per, per family and per child as well how can you adapt continuously to this changing demand and increasing number of people that require assistance how, how do you do that на сегодняшний день все услуги надаются в разном ракурсе. Это есть офлайн, офлайновская работа, это есть онлайн работа. Есть достаточно большое количество хабов для людей временно перемещенных. Есть центры, которые работают для помощи людям. Есть достаточно детских клубов, детских центров. Большое количество есть работы в онлайне, но так как сейчас проблема со светом, вот многие дети потеряли свои социальные связи. Поэтому там, где я нахожусь, в городе Днепропетровске, у нас открыты центры незламности, и в этих центрах достаточно много собирается людей и детей. Поэтому на сегодняшний день такая работа, которая, как у нас говорят, вживую, вот, она очень нужна не только потому, что люди общаются, а только еще потому, что людям есть о чем поговорить и с кем поговорить. В этих местах люди делятся всем, что с ними происходит. Вот. Они получают достаточную информацию, они получают психо... не только психологическую, они получают психосоциальную защиту. И при всем при этом они объединяются в свои группы, у них появляется желание помогать друг другу, выживать в этой ситуации. Они имеют информацию, где, что, как. И здесь также хороша работа психолога, которые могут не просто оказать кризисную помощь, первую психологическую помощь, они могут перенаправить туда, где люди получат специализированную помощь, если она нужна. Спасибо. No, thank you so much actually for this answer. I see that the connectedness between people really, also the physical connectedness, the social connectedness seem to be a, a vital in, in, in this whole process. Uh, Olga Stanislav, I have a question for, for, for both of you. Um, when you need technical resources, where do you go? Where do you turn to for, for technical resources? Uh, maybe start with uh, Olga for this question. Uh, thank you, Kuhn. I can say that now, in 2022, uh, our organization is a member of MHPSS Technical Working Group. And we who uh, translated many resources uh, even before the full scale war start. Uh, and uh, it is for us, it's the main source of resources. But I remember how it was before uh, when in 20, 2014, a psychologist in Kharkiv railway station, we, where we accepted uh, IDPs who just were evacuated after. And, and the shelling sometimes uh, from Donbass. Uh, and they really reinvented PFA uh, 
uh, they heard something, they were running to each seminar they heard about. And I observe how it works now when in Facebook uh, people uh, ask for uh, que ask questions, they communicate in professional groups in Facebook or Telegram, they share links for any seminar existing and they uh, attend everything because they are really hungry. They, they see that uh, what worked in peaceful situation is not working now. And those who can uh, take information from those people who already had that experience on the bus, they can easily deal with it. And others uh, ask everyone and we are thankful really all uh, colleagues for their support like uh, European Association of EMDR, you know, colleagues from Israel uh, who, had, uh, who organized many seminars uh, and uh, because of really uh, people need more and more information and now they're joining the Mishmises Technical Working Group more and more organizations like uh, small initiatives and it's good. Uh, great to hear that the MHPSS technical working group is playing a vital role in all of this. Stanislava, where do you turn to for technical resources? Where do you find what you need? И все эти ресурсы, которые были получены нами, вот, они все после полномасштабного вторжения начали работать еще с большей новой силой. Это был получен достаточно колоссальный опыт, потому что э, с 2014 -го года мы работали и обучались у израильских специалистов. Очень достаточно большое, большую помощь оказали нам... Министерство иностранных дел Германии, которые, в которых проектах мы участвовали. И это были достаточно прекрасные обучения. На сегодняшний день Ассоциация EMDR-терапии проводит прекрасные тренинги, прекрасные обучения. И я так понимаю, что и Ольга, и я, мы обе являемся членами Ассоциации EMDR-терапевтами. Вот. Достаточно хорош, хороший материал дает католический университет, это КПТ-система, и там очень много, достаточно очень много материалов, которые помогают в работе. Ну, вот. И нами всеми любимые навычки психологического восстановления, это просто шикарная программа из пяти сессий, которые прекрасно работают. Достаточно много тренингов в, Юни, в ЮНИСЕФе и многие организации малые, которые давали возможность получить какие-то знания новые. Украинский психотерапевтический университет также достаточно много дает знаний и новых тем, и новых пониманий в работе, и новых методик. Вот. Ну и программа «Дети и война», которая работает великолепно, начиная с 2014 года, которую мы все учили и проходили, и с это. Спасибо. Yes, uh, no, so it's, uh, it's good to hear that basically there is both domestic uh, technical guidance as, as uh, technical guidance coming uh, from abroad. And uh, both categories are actually equally welcome, that's what I what I hear uh, from you, and that's uh, that, that, that's very good. Uh, Olga, from all the resources that you have used uh, and that you know, actually, can you mention some that 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 you find particularly useful? Oh, well, maybe I will say like very um, like standard thing, but the first thing that really is useful is PFA. It's uh, and it's true that uh, as soon as the need increases, we we still do BFA trainings and we see practitioners who need them, who need to understand what to do and how to do BFA. Uh, and even when we uh, we uh, hire new staff, we first of all we do BFA training because of our staff is visiting. Uh, uh, 
villages and towns which are back under the governmental control and people need PFA or they, for example, go to the uh, destroyed uh, uh, buildings after just uh, after, after a missile attack to, to support people who, who need support. So they, they need it first of all, but still I should you I thank Stanislava who mentioned uh, Watch Out, who mentioned uh, Sita, who mentioned uh, uh, skills for psychological recovery. I should also mention stress management WHO programs. It's uh, what matters in times of stress, like individual version and uh, self-help class group version of uh, stress management. And we now start so capacity building for communities with self-help class. And also we see how important are these uh, books uh, with uh, what matters in times of stress. And I was surprised that even colleagues from abroad written to me after after we showed how we uh, work with people and distribute these books to help them support in themselves, they asked, oh, is it open, open resource? Can you share with me? Because they understand that it's, uh, no, it's really a very good program and it works well. And also I should mention, maybe it's not for psychologists, but I should mention the match camp. Uh, because of uh, really not only psychologists, uh, not only uh, like PSS workers, social workers, or people to okay. whom people address, uh, or if we say speak about families and caregivers, uh, not only with their problems, but also with uh, issues that uh, have their children. Sometimes they support to medical doctors, uh, address yeah. to uh, medical doctors, so we need to train them. Uh, what is stress, uh, what are other uh, problems that can appear and what they can yeah. do. It's important. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. I mean, what, what I really like in your answer is that you basically cover the whole spectrum no? from psychosocial well-being to, to more uh, higher mental health uh, issues and, and, and also uh, BFA. That's, uh, th that's really good to hear, actually. Um, a key question for both of you, short but important. What is missing? What are the gaps in the technical resources? What do you need? Where do we need to, need to focus more on as, as, as material developers? Uh, Stanislava, over to you. There is a lot of programs that I have no access to. It's very difficult to find them and download them. There are many programs that are not under the translation, and there are programs that are not in the full volume. Хотелось бы, конечно, чтобы эти программы были как-то более доступны нам и более открыты для нас. Yeah, we work on that. Your wish is our command as well. Olga, what's for you the missing uh, So I can say that many programs exist in even, it's even were translated to Ukrainian and where there was some scale, some amount of training, but it's not enough because much more practitioners ask for that. For example, uh, we know very good pro some several very good program of uh, on grief, on uh, uh, because uh, people can lose uh, their loved ones. Uh, sometimes we see that uh, uh, people are stressed because they uh, have lost their uh, pets even, and also we see that people uh, know that the house is destroyed, like the uh, property is gone. And it's so, it's not only about property, but also about some things that you created, you love, you, you relied on. And I can say that uh, the, there is where uh, people are hungry for that program. And also we have amount of people who are missing, uh, who, uh, whose relatives don't know or start grieving us, uh, or maybe to, to hope. And I know that there are such programs, there is threat, there are Red Cross programs, there are programs of Akrepus Clinic, uh, and they are translated into Ukrainian, but so uh, really, uh, and first line responders and like more uh, specialized uh, 
services providers are hungry for that too. And also I can say about uh, su suicide prevention that also there are some problems translated, some in the process of translation, but uh, really there is a need to scale up or to share this in you know, these programs with more practitioners. Olga Stanislava, we took careful note of your remarks of what is missing and I would like to thank both of you so much for sharing your living world, your expertise, your experience uh, with us. It was uh, very uh, resourceful to talk with you. I learned a lot and I'm sure that the participants in this exchange webinar also uh, learned uh, a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think we can move now to the working in group. Yes, thank you so much, Kuhn and Olga and Stanislava. Very interesting conversation. And as we all know, the title of our webinar today is Where Do I Find MHPSS Resources for Work with Children and Families? So now what we would like you to do is we will go into breakout rooms for the next 30 minutes, we'll, which will be facilitated by a lot of the people that you, you see here today who are working within the Ukrainian crisis. And we have three English groups and also three Ukrainian groups. Welcome back, everyone. We have to switch back to English, I see. Um... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Please remember to choose the language at which you would like to listen to the webinar in. And welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a, a fruitful conversation. I know that we had a, a lot of really great things that came up and could have talked for quite a long time. And yes, I will now hand it back to Kuhn, who's going to do a brief Q&A interview and really discuss with the different groups what their main outcomes were. Great, Ashley, you come back to me and I come uh, back to you. <laughs> but it was fascinating how in the group, the more to the end, actually, the more that we came up with uh, fascinating ideas and comments as well. And that's, of course, the moment that we have to close down. Uh, but then, Ashley and Annie, uh, can you, you have actually 90 seconds, not more than that to give a brief summary of what came up in the group. And then we would like to ask uh, group four, which is the mirror group in Ukraine, to add on from what they, on what they already uh, heard. So please, Ashley and Annie, go ahead. Great, Annie, I'll, I'll present the first question that we worked around. And this is just what resources do you currently use for working with adolescents and young people? So Anita from Plan International talked about some life skills methodologies that they use really um, focused at adolescents and young people. And this is around helping them to strengthen competencies, social emotional learning, participation, financial skills. Uh, we also talked about a, a social and emotional learning coping through changes course on future learn that lego and partners put together and um, talked about psychosocial support social emotional learning there's a whole package on IME and also I support my friends was one that came and Annie I can hand it over to you to talk about some of the limitations that we discussed thanks Ashley so one of the limitations was around um, resources being available online and not offline, so some really good material, but not able to do it kind of um, at your own speed necessarily, so you needed to have a connection. Another um, limitation that we talked about, we focused a bit more on limitations, um, was around language and, and contextualization when it comes to some of the resources, so not necessarily having quite the right focus. Um, we also spent some time talking about not a lot of resources focused for adolescents and youth, and also not resources that are developed by adolescents and by youth to be used um, with youth. So um, I think I'll stop there because I think we've gone over our time. Uh, no, you're actually doing quite good. Oh, we can keep right. going. <laughs> no, 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 I was, I was timing it. It's finished, finished, finished. Now it's finished, really, but you did very well. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, no, congratulations. Uh, the mirror group, group four for adolescents <coughs> and young people, do you have anything to add to the wise words that have been said by Ashley and Annie? 
А мы четвертого. А ми четверта група більше працювали про дітей, раннє втручання та їх вихователей. All right, okay. Uh, yeah, please then go ahead with children and uh, caregivers. Yeah. Ну, дуже цікава була група про те, що це була Польща, це була Данія, Англія, Україна, але всі ми говорили однією мовою, російською, українською, про саме моменти, пов'язані з роботою з маленькими дітьми. Тобто ми визначили спочатку, що це вік дітей до підліткового віку. І їх вихователями, тобто це батьки, опікуни або будь-які люди, які зараз їх опікують. Ми говорили про програми, що є діти і війна. Ми казали про те, що зараз дуже багато за останні півроку перекладено юнісефовських посібників. Це поради батькам дітей, народжених під час війни. Це тренінги всебічні, будь-які. Це Save the Children. SBT, ISBT, тобто це програми, які вже досить відомі в світі, і зараз вони також є перекладені. Але коли ми про це говорили, потім уже в наступному питанні виник такий момент, що дуже багато посібників перекладено, але немає таких тренерських мануалів навчання для спеціалістів. Тобто зібрали батьків, поговорили, показали, щось роздали, і людина потім могла б сама це використовувати. Бо коли батьки самі без тренера відкривають цю методичку, це просто можуть бути літери з описом, але без досвіду. Тобто ми подивилися на батьківство як на певний досвід з людиною-провідником, який цьому навчить. І ми подивилися, що в Україні такого дуже мало. Ми казали, що не тільки інформація може бути про дітей, а і дуже мало такого про контакт, бо і батьки можуть бути в стресі, дитина може бути в стресі, вони можуть бути в різних таких моментах, і так ще б хотілося додати, що дуже мало щось такого про контакт. Ми казали, що де ми можемо знайти інформацію. Це офіційні сайти ВОЗ, ЮНІСЕФ, це український сайт «Психічне здоров'я для України», це Академія стійкості, є такий дуже продвинутий сайт «Коло сім'ї», де спрямовано на дітей різнобічного плану, і там є як і наукові статті, там є і прості поради простим батькам, і саме під час війни вони дуже досконало зробили таку Академію стійкості для батьків. Ми сказали про те, що зараз дуже багато на офіційних сайтах громад, міст є інформації про гуманітарну допомогу саме психосоціального напрямку. Ми поділилися цікавим досвідом, що в деяких громадах створені окремо телеграм-канали про таку допомогу, і я поділилася, що в місті Павлоград замісник мера веде саме такий телеграм-канал, що мені було дуже цікаво. І багато груп в Фейсбуці, де між собою діляться певною інформацією. І ця інформація не лише про гуманітарну допомогу матеріальну, а й так само психосоціальну допомогу, що є дуже важливо. Чи є питання? Uh, I think this was very useful, very concrete and, and uh, very complete as well. Thank, thank you so much. I would like to go actually to uh, the Ukrainian group that was working on uh, adolescents and young people. Now I'm a bit confused who was a facilitator, but might the real facilitator stand up please and speak out. Or you are muted, or there is nobody. I think yes, I can. Uh, I can stand up, but not as a lead uh, facilitator, but the end end facilitator because I was uh, uh, I was joining both of the Ukrainian speaking groups, uh, and I can share just generally uh, very shortly. But you track the time, <laughs> uh, the observations. I think uh, the first one it would be it would have been. Uh, great to see more ukrainian it's great to see ukrainian colleagues but uh, i think it would be great to see more of them 
uh, I think the language and the context really matters because even in this brief and, and straightforward exercise, we were kind of going into circle and defining what is resource, uh, what is meant uh, uh, and uh, how specific and detailed we need to get. Uh, and one of the general observations that, uh, and then what do people actually use? I think there is a feeling of, of have, organizations have libraries, they collect them together, but usability of them uh, is, uh, uh, is the question. Um, and one comment that I think it was very important from uh, the group five was uh, information, just information is not enough. We want some practical guidance and uh, uh, learning on how to utilize it and use it. So when there is this practical component, it becomes then easily to disseminate and grow. And I think this program, uh, Children and War, that has been mentioned, uh, it's not, there is a reason why it has been so often mentioned. There was a massive training and massive supervision afterwards and rollout in Ukraine since 2015, I believe. So that's, uh, these are my, uh, my general comments uh, into participating in two groups. Thank you. That's fascinating. And you just did 19 seconds, 90 seconds, and it was very brave of you, as we know you to stand up. And this question for being practical is something yes, that's still sure. coming back, right? Um, thank you so much, Anna. Uh, uh, I would like to ask, uh, sorry? There is Nele also, who was in group five. Can we, yeah, yes, uh, who sure. was? Хотіла б додати щодо того, що дуже активно піднялося питання щодо піклування про себе тих людей, які насамперед працюють з дітьми та підлітками. Дякую. Фантастик, дякую дуже багато. Можемо перейти до англійської групи на дітей та дітей? Так. Go ahead. Um, yeah, <laughs> right. So it was mentioned as very used um, tools, uh, PFA for children, and we all agreed on that. Tools that focus also on uh, psychoeducation for parents and on stabilization for parents. So doing what matters in times of stress for parents and caregivers, WHO was uh, referred as a very good resource. And also care for child development package um, developed by UNICEF. Um, however, we also identified some uh, limitations. Um, specifically, uh, the first one is that actually not enough agencies are providing support to parents. So those agencies that are doing that um, in the end are a little bit overloaded. Um, there is need for more uh, follow-up with, uh, uh, with parents, more practical suggestions, more practical accompaniment. Um, there are no specific uh, guidelines and documents for Roma community, which we know uh, is very important, especially in this uh, Ukraine response in different countries we work with. And um, we would like to see supervision tools for psychological support for children. Um, we would like to see more translation, especially in Russian and not just in Ukrainian, of some of the tools that have been developed. And uh, um, related to community-based approach, uh, community-based activities for parents and caregivers, really reflecting the community-based uh, core of intervention. However, the feeling is that the protocols and tools in use don't really give any guidance on the very specific volatile and unstable environment we're working on. Um, for instance, we have to keep in mind that if we're using protocols with sessions, people may not be able to attend all the sessions they're coming, they're going down. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> uh, this is my role, sorry for that. But uh, yeah, no, again, it's a sort of adaptability to contextualization and therefore also the level of practical, how practice something has to be right. And that, that's again, it's coming back up. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this. Can we go to the Ukraine speaking uh, group on self care for practitioners? And then the English group can add on. So the Ukraine speaking language group on uh, self care for practitioners.
phone just to inform you that the 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 group um actually there was very few people who joined that group so that group didn't really happen but group five which was working on the ch young children and caregivers also spent a little time talking about it so maybe we could invite them if they had a little time to talk, uh, reflect on the self-care dimension to share a little bit of that content. Where did that voice come from? Yes, yes, please, uh, if then uh, group five can uh, share a little bit on uh, what has been discussed on that topic. Okay, who was group five? Ananda, remember who was group five? Може трошки про це розказати, бо я маю досвід. А зараз майже всі спеціалісти, які які працюють, то у всіх великих програмах залучені супервізори. І всі спеціалісти всі мають групову супервізію і мають особисту супервізію, що це важливо. Так само підтримуються якісь соціальні спільноти. І дійсно, що це дуже гарно впливає. Це обмін досвідом, це обмін навчанням, бо зараз не вистачає, наприклад, такого навчання спеціалістам в Україні, як кризове консультування, і теж багато заходить різних інституцій, і це є такий певний обмін. То, мабуть, гарна супервізія дуже допомагає. Дякую, дякую. Uh, this is good to know as well. I see uh, Olga's hand is up, and after Olga, we move back to Ashley for closing because we are uh, now going over time. But we're happy to hear from you, Olga. Please share. Muted, you muted. Okay, can somebody, okay, Olga, now you're not muted, please speak up. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, I wanted really to add that uh, really it's important, maybe not on, it's important to speak with all organizations who start uh, psychosocial support uh, programs that you need provides supervision for, uh, and it's clinical mm -hmm. supervision, it's not like administrative supervision for psychologists and PSS workers. You need to provide supportive sessions for them, maybe some intervention on balling group or groups or whatever. And also you should give them like very clear understanding of what you can do, how you work, what is your responsibility, like what you can do and what is not real to do at all. Because sometimes people wait from themselves that they they want to do such things that it's not real to do at all and that's why they burn out more fast than others so and uh, it's important thing and uh, and i agree with uh, helena that uh, really provision of all these things works well to uh, ensure more or less uh, well-being of specialists because of sometimes there are other factors that that are not that are not depending on what you do in your organization. Thank you, Olga. Thank you. Uh, I think of course we can agree with that, and it's uh, very important to bring that up. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. I think the discussions in the group have been very fruitful and. Uh, it gives us a lot of guidance on what work still needs to be done for supporting your vital tasks. Uh, Ashley, over to you to uh, close up. Great. Thank you so much, Kuhn. And thank you, colleagues, for all the interesting responses. I know I've learned a ton, and I'm really excited to go back through the Miro boards and uh, get an overview of everything that we spoke about today. So I realized I didn't introduce myself in the beginning. My name is Ashley Namiro, and I'm the acting director at the MHPSS Collaborative. And this webinar is actually one of four webinars 
And as you know, today was really focused on where we find MHPSS resources for work with children and families. And this is part of a larger initiative that's supported by HIAS and MHPSS.net and the collaborative where we are doing a series of four webinars. I'll talk a little bit in a second about a community of practice that we have for practitioners just like you on children and families, and also a resource collection. And the next two webinars, um, one is gonna be on the analysis of needs and gaps in children and family resources for programming in the current crisis response. And we're gonna have perspective from three country level technical working groups, which we're really excited about. And the fourth webinar is going to be what is next for child and family MHPSS, children and family global technical experts reflecting on the state of child and family programming and the priorities for resource development. And please look out on our social media channels, both highestmhpss.net and the collaborative to, um, we'll put some content out around when these webinars will be hosted and links to sign up for them. So as I mentioned, a really exciting part of this project is the community of practice. So I'm sure many of you are already members on mhpss.net. And if you're not, please um, sign up and join our community of practice. And this is really a space for um, practitioners working with children and families, practitioners that are interested in working with children and families, specifically in humanitarian settings, to serve as a place to facilitate greater connection, just like we did here today, exchange and dialogue to strengthen MHPSS responses for children and families. Um, and um, looking to at the humanitarian develop and peace building nexus, as we know, there's so much overlap. Uh, so we would love for you to join this, ask questions, um, really uh, introduce yourself. This is a place and a community of practice that we would love for all of you to be a part of. And one thing that we talked about in my group today is that there aren't a ton of really practical resources specific for the different um, stages and ages from um, you know zero to 18 and even looking at young people. So I think it would be great to continue these conversations on that community of practice. Next slide, please. And just for those of you who aren't aware, as I mentioned, we also have this resource collection that we have been collating. So the community of practice, you do need to have an MHPSS.net login to be able to access, but this resource collection is, you can access it without an MHPSS.net login. And we have worked so hard to really collate what we see as the most important resources for children and families. And when you go onto the link, you'll see that we've created categories that you can click on. Also, you'll see right when you log on to the site that you can change it into the language that you prefer. And a really great part about this resource collection is that you can filter out uh, different resources in different languages. And so if you haven't checked that out, please do today. Uh, one thing that we will do is go and refer to the mirror boards and we'll look at all the resources that you all discussed about today and make sure that we're including those on the resource collection. And last but not least, um, a big thank you to everyone for participating today and being with us. Please take the exit survey. It's really helpful for us to learn and grow as we are putting on these webinars. Um, yes, a, a big thank you for being here 
And we look forward to diving into the mirror boards and learning more from you. Uh, one last thing is if you have any questions or want to send us an email, there's a link on the resource collection that will refer you to Valeria's email address, who works at mhpss.net. So thank you so much, everyone, and have a lovely morning, afternoon, or evening.